Okay, today we look at estimation for costs. Um, I'll go very fast. The, the one that you can read from the slide, I'll go very fast. Uh, only today, I will only have one objective is to calculate the cost uh, uh, by a certain S, uh, steps. Uh. Okay. okay. So today we'll do pricing and estimation. Okay. okay. So uh, CR cost estimating relationship. Normally we need a up. Uh, we will gener generate the output of a cost model. So it can be uh, from the equation cost quality. Uh, cost cost or cost non cost uh, relationship meaning you can plot the graph by a few uh, relationship so mathematic equation means you have your y and x and then you will come up with the all the dot here this is your data then you come up with the line regression analysis is how good is your line let's say in Excel, you can generate y equal to mx plus c, and you can generate a data called regression r square, 0 0.9 something. 0 0.98 means if you zoom in, your line and the dot is very, very close, very, very close to the dot. Okay, there's a calculation there, but we are not interested in how to find the calculation. But what you need to understand is the regression. Huh? Regression is how the how 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 good is the the data fit to your estimation line. Okay, regression R squared. Then your Y cost, X cost, cost quality, cost cost, cost non cost. It depends how you plot it. Okay. Okay. So you have type one acquisition and type two acquisition. So this one you read lah. Huh? You read left and right. So they are sources for your information. When you do estimation, you need data. So how you get your data? Experience, your logbook, or your QA quality uh, logbook measurement. Uh, you do survey. You do knowledge of the operation or process. Some you need experience. Uh, when it comes to design of tooling, design of machine, then you need experience in operation um, estimate using software if available now today you sure have a software to estimate right for example matlab uh, and so on and sometimes your data can be uh, verbally through interview okay um, for example if you are designing for consumer product like for example, Apple Watch uh, or any Apple products or any cars products. Um, there's a certain way of design met, uh, methodology or design philosophy. Uh, why they design in such a way? Because it's, it's dealing with arts. Arts cannot, you cannot quantify arts one. I can, uh, but uh, is when you go into creativity, you cannot have an equation like uh, you must do in a certain way. Creativity is a, is a human touch. Huh? It's a human touch. So it, 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 it's, it's based on experience. Okay. A bit lah, huh? So how you do, uh, how other company do their, their cost estimate, all this. Huh? So they will do statistical data. They use statistical data or parametric estimate. Or they use analog estimate. Analog means they compare the figure side by side. Where they do reverse engineering, they take, they take a competitor uh, design, go back to the R and D department, they dismantle it, then they will do comparison of features to their own company products. All right. For example, they they buy a, a Tesla Model X, then they compare with the 
uh, BMW EV cars, for example. So they will make comparison. Or expert judgment, lah. this one, uh, maybe they import some uh, chief engineer from Apple. So they want to go into the, the Model X uh, dashboard design and so on, right? So they, they can do. Okay, type of estimate. First type is order of magnitude analysis. Order of magnitude analysis is without detailed entering data. So the order of accuracy will be plus minus 35%. Okay, plus minus 35%. So the type of this type of uh, order of magnitude analysis, you can use um, past experience, parametric curve, capability estimate. This one is to have a very quick estimate, right? Uh, for example, the electric bill for the next month uh, for the manufacturing floor, you can use a very rough uh, data to predict. Okay. okay, order of magnitude. They estimate a top down estimate. What mean by top down? You have six level of management uh, structure. So management level one, two, three, and then technical level, uh, you start with four, five, six. So if you see this one as organization chart, the one at the top will be level one, and then go to the second one, third one. Then it pass through the functional unit. So when it comes to functional unit, it starts with four, five, and six. Okay. Um, okay. So this one um, usually applied to level one, work background structure, WBS. So for chapter six, you will always see the word WBS, work breakdown structure. This is work breakdown structure, level one to level six. Okay. Uh, this is for example, um, how you estimate the land, the land value. So this one is in US, Chicago. So your, con your contract, you contract a construction contractor who inform you that parametric statistical cost of a for home is 120 square per foot. But in Los Angeles, uh, in big city, it might be 350 square foot, for example. Huh? So another one is approximate. Just now is uh, order of magnitude. The next one will be approximate. Approximate, it break, it change from 35% to 15%, plus minus, okay? Now, you view this kind of estimate based on WBS. When you sit at the top, you won't see very, very detailed things. Okay, you as a CEO, you as a MD, normally you have an overview and you don't go deep into that plus minus things. So when you have a order of magnitude estimates, you normally from the top down, means from the top here. So here, your, your accuracy will be plus minus 35%. But when you come to technical guy, like you guys, uh, uh, engineering guy, you very particular in uh, how you screw the, the screw inside the hole. It must be plus minus, how many? Uh. Then one, this other type. Uh, this one, you come to approximate, estimate. Uh, this one also, um, approximate, estimate is uh, also top down. Uh, like a uh, more more at the management level, functional management level, right? So they reduce from thirty five to fifteen percent. So they have all this lah. Okay, so they this sometimes they make decision based on rule of thumb, right? Okay. Then uh. Definite, definite estimate is bottom up estimate. Bottom up means from the front liner to the top management. 
So if you are a frontliner, you look at very detailed things, right? Uh, so the accuracy become plus minus 5%. Accuracy is very accurate, right? Like how you screw the, the things, okay? So there are three types. Uh. One is order of magnitude, which is over here, level one, two, three. Then estimate, estimate one, also top down estimate, but it will be around here, not, not here, right? Here is a uh, uh, order of magnitude. Then approximate estimate is about here. Technical level is 5%. Here is 5%. Right? So the rest is read, huh? Okay. So another method of estimating is use curve, a learning curve. So learning curve is you put in big data, then you can plot graph. Okay. So each company have their own way of uh, doing estimate. Right. So you have a table over here. So estimate methods. You have parametric, analog, engineering, generic type. You have uh, ROM, budget, definite, and so on. Huh? So what is uh, Okay, this is just a sample. Huh? This is a sample. I'll show you the tutorial question. Okay, this one. This one you read now. Huh? You read. So estimating, uh, estimating tables or manual huh? is actually there is a document that you just need to fill in what. What is there? What is the item there? Then the computer will generate the total cost for you. It's a template. Here's a template. Estimate. So um, it depends on class. Uh. What is your class? So if you're class one, then you use about 5%. Then 15% um, uh, is 35, uh, is uh, about class two. Then from plus three, four, five, they are uh, magnitude, right? Magnitude estimate, right? Okay, so these are example of a checklist from class one to class four. Class one to class four, there are some checklists, lah. for example, a project management. What are the checklists that you do? For example, the first one, uh, you see the first one? First one is uh, from the uh, bottom bottom up uh, from the functional group the technician all these are uh, so our engineers are uh, they go very very detailed so you see the list of checklists is quite a lot right and as you go towards the top management uh, they less less item you need to check okay so that into the powerpoint slides okay this is a long table it's a long table. So this is for construction. Construction, they have uh, data they need before each phrase. Uh, so they have all the things here. Okay. So they have there are lots of long checklists. Uh, for for uh, manufacturing also. Uh, manufacturing, there's a checklist. Uh, So this is during bidding. Uh, you need to estimate uh, for the customer requirement. So for example, uh, the life cycle of the projects. Huh? So you have a conceptual stage, planning stage, and main stage. So you conceptual, conceptual, you 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 just uh, brainstorm what you want to do. Conceptual concept without me uh, based on minimum scope information. This is when you start the project, you build a team, you start with the concept. So concept means uh, the, the scope, uh, the, the scope of what you want to do or where you want to go, what, which, which plot of land you want to see, uh, what type of uh, building you want to build, whether you build residential or commercial buildings. That's a concept, right? Or what, what style you want to have if you do renovation, like. Right?
planning stage, you come up with the design already, the, the, the first draft of design. Okay. Then main stage is more go into detail work already. Okay. Then termination stage means uh, you, if you have some uh, decision you need to make or stop with not enough information, you need to go to this stage, termination. You need to redo from the planning stage. You need to go back to planning stage. Huh? Okay. So this one you read. Huh? Okay. Okay, put back down. Okay, pricing process. Normally, typical company, they from top down, uh, uh, top, uh, they from down to top. Uh. Okay, they will ask the, the manager info, then the manager will collect data, then they will compile, then send to the meeting for the decision. So all these are a theory part. So this one you read, lah. Huh? So you read. Okay. Now this uh, diagram is important when it come to uh, how you manage your uh, asset, huh? So this is functional pricing flow. How they how they do the pricing from bottom up. So here, section to department, department to functional management. So up to here, they are functional group. Okay, so the cycle will be looping here. Functional management will loop back to department, then they will exchange information here. Okay, so this is level, uh, WBS level 456 is over here. Then 123 is over here. Okay, so program management, so WBS release, then it will have uh, pricing information up and down. Okay. Main hours, main hours is the lowest, the, uh, the, the lowest pricing element and time frame per month. Huh? Uh, then many hours per month per task are converted in dollar after multiplication of appropriate rate. Lah. So mains hour actually is uh, price. Uh, how much they pay you per hour. That is called main hour. Huh? Or labor rate. Lah. Labor rate. Okay. Okay. Um, on management side, how a company predicts salary structure for five years? So there are three scenarios. If you estimate, you underestimate, then you're going to uh, decrease your profit. Why decrease your profit? Because there is an increased cost in future if you underestimate. The first scenario. Second one, you overestimate. Um, you overestimate means uh, you your project won't be very interesting because your investor look at your cost already scared already but right? you, you overestimate then your your pricing your cost is higher than your competitor then people will go to other side lah. okay if project is governed and funded then the salary structure is under contract negotiation huh? this one just a uh, uh, information important is these two scenario what happen if you are underestimate the salary structure, what, what happened if you are overestimate? Okay. Uh, it's a HR job. Well, you will mark up or you will you will say something higher than the market rate. Uh, but it depends on scenario to scenario. Lah. So for example, for your case, your engineering degree graduate degree, yeah. You go to Job Street, survey, they give you a range. Um, job Street survey, uh, salary survey already come out already. So each area or each stage have their own range of salary. So you are junior level, there's a senior, uh, uh, 
for your case, you graduate will be starting from 2,500 to 3,000 something. This will be the range for fast graduate in engineering courses. Of course, it depends on industry also, right? Uh, manufacturing industry will be a bit low. If you go to oil and gas, it will be a bit high. Okay. Um, if you go into IT, robotic, then also on the high side. Because now the day we go into industrial 4.0, everything go into smart manufacturing. So if you have the high skill, you are you're dealing with uh, IoT skill, you're able to program, you're able to do analysis, then your salary will be higher. If you are technically skilled, normally we will be on the lower side. It depends on the skill set you have also. Uh, but if you have a very, very specific skill that is rarely or need by the market, then your salary will be higher. Okay, but it's this within the range. Lah. So let's say the range maximum in that area is 3,000. You go to interview, normally you are mentioned, you ask you one, what is your, ex, ex, what, what is your expected salary? Okay. Don't go too low. Uh, because if you say 2005, their budget is 3000. You say 2005, they say, okay, I give you 2005. Okay. You need to do your homework before you go to interview. Uh. You need to go ask around the colleagues inside that company. For example, if you're going to Dyson, it's good that you meet someone from Dyson, go and ask uh, what is the fresh graduate range then, right? Or your or your senior who just recently enrolled in that company, you can roughly ask. Uh, but salary is very sensitive things. Uh. It depends on how, how close you, you are with that person and how good you communicate with that person also. Okay, but roughly you can know uh, the range. Okay, uh, so um, of course, if you say like, let's say the maximum range is 3,000, you say you want to 4,000. Uh, if you say 4,000 straight away, maybe you're not qualified. Uh, they will dis disqualify you uh, because you, you, you request for so much and your skill set is not at professional level. If you are request for 4,000 and you have all, a loss of certification, right? You, uh, let's say welding, you have a, uh, you, you know how to do six axis uh, welding, right? Means you can do inverted welding, uh, certified for that. Then you can request more, for example. Uh, so if you only can do simple, simple one, you request higher than people will, 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 will give chance to other candidates. Huh? Okay. Uh, so labor rates, all this you read, lah. Yes, you read. Lah. Okay, so labor rate is based on experience. So the more experience you have in that field, uh, you have more bargain power. Then budget also by the company, and local outlook. Local outlook is the the environment, lah. For example, the range of that state, uh, in the Penang state or KL state, maybe they pay higher because the industry is matured in that area and lots of competitor there. Lots of company A might be also looking for the same expert. So they actually, they are competing with each other. Uh, okay. okay. Um, so like for example, very niche area in aerospace defense, for example, you go into Safan, uh, that design uh, fighter jets. Huh? Then uh, it depends on your negotiation and also their budget in at that particular. Okay. Um, so labor hours submitted by functional units. If you're like production manager, normally your budget will be overestimate. Why? If you work in a China company, you know lah. You submit ten thousand, management will not approve ten thousand. They will give discount one. They will slash here, slash there. Huh? so the in the slide here is called massage lah. 
they will squeeze down the budget. So, um, so normally the budget or labor hour they will overestimate. Uh, so just have a, a awareness lah. Just have a awareness. Okay. So there's a reason why management go and reduce the labor hour. One is overestimate. Another one is uh, insufficient fund. Inf insufficient fund. And also they want to remain competitive in the environment. The word competitive here is not your salary, but is based on projects. Right? They want to stay the project become competitive or they, they want to win the bidding, the bidding competition. So one of the major costs is labor costs. Uh, so this one apply for you want to apply for any funding. The major cost, a major cost for the project is labor costs. Right. So what is the conflict will arise between project manager and functional manager in terms of uh, labor distribution? Okay, so there are two because of their role. Uh, project manager will, will, will think in terms of projects. Project manager, you, you oversee project. You, you're, you're more concerned about the success of the projects. But the functional manager, they, 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 want, they want to protect their staff. So there is an argument there uh, during the, the tender of the project or collection of products. So when you, you are the project manager, you want to keep your project competitive, means low cost. But the functional manager, they want to maintain their, their, their staff, actually technical staff. So technical staff, if you're very good, you cannot pay too low. If you pay too low, they will jump to another company. And that is the trend. Okay. Okay. What is the solution a project manager can do to resolve this, con this conflict? Uh, this module always asks you to solve problems. Huh? So how do you solve this kind of conflict? What do you think if you are the project manager? How you solve this conflict? How you solve? How you solve? Your functional manager submit the budget to you. You say cannot too high. Then how? Ah? Because they you need their help also actually. How you solve this kind of conflict? How how you solve? Again the keyword lah communicate lah. Communicate lah communication is important ah. So your project manager select members for the project team who are knowledgeable in man hour standards for each of the department. Means you select your PMO, your project management office team, uh, and the team member know the rate of that industry. For example, you select an uh, engineer who, who know the market rate. Uh, really know the market rate then you should have no problems huh? then i mean you select a member who have who, who who know what is happening outside or the standard then there's a trust there lah. okay a trust there then you need to talk lah. you need to buy coffee for the functional manager explain lah why you need to reduce let's say 20 ringgit per hour. Now you reduce to 18 hour at 18 ringgit per hour. Uh, you explain uh. Okay. Maybe the volume is not high, so you need to reduce. So you need to present the whole picture to the functional manager. Okay. So again, this is this is the reason why project. Team members are often promoted from within the functional rank. So they, when you become a project manager or you become part of the PMO, uh, very high chances you'll be get promoted. 
Uh, uh, it's inside the PMO, la, PMO office, your, your project management office. Yeah, representative. La. Uh, uh, means PMO, yeah. PMO, you are here, la, PM, then this is a team member. So they are from the functional group. They are not manager, la, but they are their manager select them to go inside here. They are reporting to this one. So they are expert also, la, they are expert. So they put under you, lo. you manage them. Okay. So there are two different uh, terms here, overhead and overhead rate. Rate is deal with time on uh. Rate with time. O overhead is ongoing business expenses that cannot be directly attributed to a specific activities. But the overhead rate is a cost allocated to the production of products or services. Uh, okay. Okay. So project manager, how they increase the success rate of the project? Uh, increase the success of his project by insisting that each program member understand overhead rate. For example, if overhead rate apply only to the first forty hours of the work. Then depending on the overhead rate program dollar can be saved by performing work on overtime where increased salary is at the lower burden. Meaning your project cost, uh, this is dollar, project cost. If you have a fixed rate, let's say uh, technician expert, uh, 200 ringgit per hour. So this one, if this, if your project, you need to produce, let's say a product, uh, this technician can do 10 unit per hour. Your order is 1000 unit. So if you have a fixed rate there, so it depends on how good is your technician. So your cost by hours, uh, this is hours. So let's say the first hundred, uh, eight hours. Uh. The first eight hours mean morning to afternoon. Eight hours you can produce if you, if you're using this rate, uh, your rate will be in a linear form. All right, then after eight hours, maybe after five to 10 p.m., this is considered OT. OT can be like, uh, if you need to push up the volume, then the the cost, the total cost won't be straight, la. it will be like flatter a little bit. La. Okay, so that's why they have an OT system and non-OT system. Um, by a measure rules, if your salary is above a certain rate, we need to check our uh, current one, I think is uh, 3,005. If your salary is 3,005 and above, you need to check uh, the, the reason one. You more than that value, you cannot claim OT. Uh. Uh, not entitled to claim IT or T. Uh, but it depends on company to company. Uh, for example, uh, for example. So there's a labor, labor rules there. Uh. So that's why all the manufacturing, um, the operator, normally their basic salary, they are very low, uh, less than the labor law, then they can entitle to claim OT. Uh, there's a calculation to calculate OT also, la, but that one is you need to refer to the handbook. Huh? Okay, this one also you read from the slides. Okay. Um, yeah, this one you read, huh? This one you read. How you how you come up with the equation for the overhead rate? You did you need three parameters: direct labor rate, 
direct business space projection, projection of over expenses and all these are the factor that you need to consider. Huh? Okay. This one is a loss of theory. Lah. So this one you read. Lah. Projection of overhead based on what? Lah? Based on all this. Lah. Okay. So annual budget means per year budget is a prime factor in controlling the overhead cost. So these are the explanation because uh, your CEO will give you the goals of that year. So it will review and approve by the management. So it will be like next year budget, how much? What is the KPI for next year? Then you'll come up with the budget. Now. Okay. So is there any headcount or any extra new stuff you want to hire and so on? All right. Uh, Okay, so uh, six subtopic, including under material support. Right? Um, so material support, material purchase, and so on. this one you read. Lah. Okay, so this is the diagram. Upon release of work statement, work breakdown structure, and so on, the end bill manufacturing plan as the end item bill or materials, material plan are prepared according to this uh, flow. Huh? So if this one is important for your test because you can draw, right? So um, you start with the work statement, then go to breakdown structure, WBS, work, uh, work breakdown structure, then go to subdivided, planning, you go to bill of material, engine drawing, where you get bill of material from engine drawing, right? So bill of material give you two, manufacturing and schedule. How you do it and when you want to deliver it. So there are two, huh? manufacturing and the time schedule. So manufacturing, you need to come up with the tooling, how you do the products. Then the schedule, delivery schedule, combine these two, it become planning planning activity, uh, you compute, computer here means you compile the information, then you become a budget. Okay. Okay, this one you read. Lah. Okay. Now, this is a procurement plan or purchase requisition, also important. Uh, because this is a flow that you can draw and explain. So how you do the procurement planning, there's a flow, go up and down. So it come from management, go down to WBS release, go to um, material control, material control, then go down to the vendors and so on. And you look back. Huh? Okay, so this one also you read. So there are 13 steps, 13 steps. Provide a logical sequence to help a company control its limited resources. So there are 13 steps. Huh? This one, no choice, you have to memorize. All right. So 13 steps. If the question asks you, what are the steps to help a company to control its limited resources? 13 step you cannot you have to memorize one. so each step is one mark off. so 13 marks half question already okay but if this one come out i'll let you know okay but there are 13 steps so this one you read now okay Um, detail pricing summarize at least two stage. One is preparation uh, during the meeting with the management and the pricing termination. Pricing termination means you uh, close the projects. Right? So 
So these are the list of typical pricing report. This one you also read. Uh. Okay, there are a few uh, typical report. Detailed cost breakdown, total project manpower curve, monthly equivalent manpower, annual cost distribution or yearly cost distribution, functional cost and our summary. This one you read. Lah. Okay. So this one, how the question can ask you is that um, give a few a few examples or three examples of typical pricing reports. So this one you mentioned three from here. Lah. So they are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They are eight. Lah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the question might ask you give uh, three examples of a typical pricing report. So you can choose any one of these and then you explain. Okay, this one you read now. Huh? Okay. Okay, so let's say this is the, the graph, the chart to explain the uh, department main hours. So on the y axis is manpower in manpower in main months. So this one is 5, 10, 15, 20, and so on. Then gen, uh, December to January. Okay. So projected manpower required for a uh, given department. So this dashboard, maybe December, he need maybe 22%. Then January until March, he, the department only need like 16 or 17 people. Then, the production pick up after March, um, March until May, then drop down again, then drop down again, and up, up, okay? So department manager, however, attempt to smooth out the manpower curve as shown in the solid line so that you don't create disturbance to your production. Or this month you hire people, this month you fire people, so very troublesome. Uh, and then account also very headache. Uh, this month, uh, why so much money come out? and so on, okay? So the department manager, they try to uh, smoothing out the, the main power in average, right? So they will make estimation, the dotted line, and then the department manager will smooth up. You will take either by average or they will take the mean of the whole curve, like they will smooth up so that they, um, they can manage from January to December time. They don't need to always like hire people. Okay. Now then how you do when you at this, this stage, let's say January, you have 20 people throughout the year. So during this year, what happened to this, this, uh, let's say three people here. Um, these three people, you know that you have, in this case, you have a uh, overstuff because the need is 18 staff. We have two more staff extra. Two more staff extra, your staff will feel very relaxed during this one. So you need to be smart enough to maybe send them for training. The two staff send them for training so that they they, they equip for the next project coming in. Maybe they need the skill set over here. So this, this stage, you can send them for training. Then this one start to pick up already. So to pick up, you need the manpower up to from, the, from 20 to 30, you need extra tens. Means you need OT here. You need extra manpower here or OT. So when you OT, you can improve the productivity either by, by using technology or using OT system. Uh, force your staff come back to work. Yeah. Then here also. Uh, okay. So you, the communication is important. So maybe you can project this whole graph to the whole company during town hall and let the whole department members attend and then at least they know what time they will be very busy, what time they will be a bit relaxed uh, so that they don't complain or oh, why this, this work, uh, this month so busy, that month so, so relaxed, uh, okay? Uh, okay, two questions to ask is whether you have sufficient people, what is the rate that you need to, 
what is the rate at which the function department can staff the projects? Okay, so it means how much money you can pay or what, how many staff you need to station at that particular time. Okay, so type of problem can occur, huh? this one. Okay. So again, the axis is still the same. Number of men you need and the uh, reference month. Huh? So curve A. Curve A show manpower requirement for a given department after times moving. It's curve A. Curve B, modification on time traces curve to account for reasonable project many. The difference between these two curves will reflect the amount of money can be, uh, the, the amount of money that you can save or the contractor have to forfeit owning to many and demanding activities. Means there is a cost plus minus here. Okay, cost minus here. Okay, this one you read lah. This one is a bit a bit qualitative. Um, it's, it's very difficult to to explain how to do it. But this graph, the main purpose showing this graph is that. Um, you can do a, a, a effort called smoothing, smoothing out the department main hours. Means you can get the average value of for the total year. They, they, there's an equation, or there's a they, there's a way of estimating the mean number for that particular year. Then you estimate how many stuff you need. Okay. Um, pricing review procedure. This one also important. Uh, because it's a chart that you can draw and explain. Okay, so this one you go and read lah. This one you go and read. Um, if from a few a few main character, management, CEO, program manager, then team member, and the functional managers. So the arrow go up and down. It depends on how you process the policies are uh, the, the pricing. This one also you go and read the PowerPoint slides. Huh? Okay. Uh, this is a review procedure, how they go up and down. Okay. okay. So his historical, uh, this is estimating high risk projects. So for high risk, uh, how you know is a high risk or low risk? It depends on the historical estimate. So construction company, they can do a very good historical standard, which lower their risk. Uh, because uh, compared to R&D and high risk, uh, R&D and MIS, I forget what is this already, but R&D, uh, they are quite high risk because they always, R&D is a new, new unknown area, or you need to design something new. You don't know whether it's going to happen or not, cannot happen, right? But construction, you already have a template, you already have the, the pre crust structure or the schedule, similar projects or similar technologies. You need so many times, you already have the experience already. So you can estimate based on your history data. Okay, this one is again uh, accuracy of uh, WBS low versus uh, high risk okay so low risk if it has program level a uh, level one two three four five huh? level one two three four five if it's a program then low risk will be accuracy will be plus minus 35 high risk project will be more than 75 percent if it's a project then the percentage will be drop accuracy will drop to 20 percent High risk will be 50%. And the work package here is level five technician. The accuracy will be very, very low. Only 2% and high risk will be 5%. What is important observe here is the percentage of accuracy when you drop from level one to level five. What is important you observe that when you add the top management, you don't see things very, very detailed. Okay, the accuracy will be very high compared to the lower uh, functional group. 
Uh, that is uh, the important thing. Uh, the numbers is, is just a reference. Uh. Okay. Uh, lowering wave, uh, a strategy to estimate high risk projects, they use lowering wave or moving window. So let's say this is uh, R&D projects from January to de uh, December. And you have uh, A, B, C, D. You have level five, level two work, like this one, right? So last for three months. For part A, R&D effort established six months. It's well defined and can be estimated to level five of the uh, WBS. Okay. However, the effort of the later six month is based on the result of the six month and can be estimated at level two only at incurry, uh, incurring high risk. So this one, level five. Uh, uh, level five. Okay. So means for the part A, uh, part A, if you are R&D projects, you assign the work to level five people. Then after six months, only you can make decision at the higher level. So there's a high risk there. There's a high risk there. So at B, uh, at B, there's a shift of window So this is also six months huh? from um, from three shift to seven. Um, Okay, this one, this one, I just ignore uh, this one. This one a bit qualitative. I'm not able to give you uh, a good example for this one. Okay, what mean by moving window? Moving window is uh, is an approach uh, where where you manage your projects. Uh, You see the, the time still there. You still need uh, 12 weeks. But when you're squeezing the, the window, uh, the time to make decision also very short compared to from A to D. Okay. It's just, it's just, it's just a very qualitative observation that when you, when you, uh, uh, when you do estimate, uh, when you do estimate, uh, the the it just tell you that the the workload here lah, but it cannot tell you more detail about that lah. This one this one you also read lah. Okay, this one also you go through the PowerPoint slides. It's a flow chart and how you make decision. Uh, when you're assessing the risk. Okay, this one you read. Huh? There's a certain procedure to assess risk. This is just an example. This is just an example. Huh? So each company have their own way of uh, uh, doing the risk assessment. So this is a textbook example. So I think I stop at project risk. Next lecture, we continue with project risk. Okay. We stop here. Lah.